I'm here with RBS Wigs, and I'm going to talk about a few things to consider when purchasing a wig. A big factor to consider, more so than just the appearance of the wig, is the cap construction itself. You want to make sure that this wig is going to fit and be comfortable enough that you'll want to wear it. So there's different types of cap constructions. There are full lace wigs, lace front, wefted, and they all have their pros and cons. There are full lace wigs, which are 100% hand tied, and therefore they are a lot more realistic and offer much more style opportunities. Um, a big one is the ability to put the hair up, uh, which isn't always common when it comes to wigs. There are also lace front wigs, which have lace on the front from ear to ear, and so you still get that very natural hairline and still a good amount of styleability options. There are also wefted wigs, which are more of a basic wig cap, and there's generally no lace, and so there's not as much styleability, but they are the most durable. And a common one is open wefting, which is also very cool and allows a lot of airflow in. So besides the type of cap construction, a good thing to also remember is to measure your head. Wigs come in all sorts of sizes, from petite to average to large, and it's important that you want it to fit and not slide off. So there are two different ways I recommend measuring your head. First, you want to go from ear to ear. So if you take a measuring tape and start it on where one sideburn would be, bring it around to the other side. And so you want this to be where your the front of your hair will be. So typically when I have my wigs on, the hairline starts here. And so by looking at this, my measurement is about 12 and a half to 13. And the second way that you want to measure is from the front again, where your hair line will be. So mine is about right there. And you want to bring it down the back and I'll move so you can see. And you want it down to where the base of your head is. And so when I look at this, and just so you can see again, okay. And when I look at this, my head length is about 14 inches. So when going to buy a wig, they'll typically have the measurements along with what cap size that is. And so those are the two that you should be looking for. And the last thing I'll bring up when it comes to cap construction itself is your comfort level. Now, every type of wig, the comfort is all based on preference. But a big thing to consider is when it comes to things like hair loss itself. As somebody with a bald head, I find that certain wigs are a bit more comfortable. Now, if the wig itself isn't, I can always put a wig cap on. Um, anything that is cotton or silk adds another barrier. Um, especially because I personally have quite sensitive skin. There are also different types of wigs when it comes to the hair itself. There are human hair wigs, which are going to be on the more expensive side, but they are a lot more realistic. They can be styled and washed the same as natural, regular human hair. Um, but in terms of the cons, they also act like human hair. So, for instance, in the rain or humidity, they'll also get frizzy, like nat natural hair does, which, personally, I like because it feels like I have hair again. But that's also something to consider. There are also synthetic wigs. Now, these wigs have a lot of perks in the case that they are more affordable than human hair wigs. Also, when, you style, when they're styled, they typically will hold that style. They're waterproof, they won't get frizzy, and because of all this, there are a lot less maintenance. The, I would say in terms of cons, they aren't necessarily as natural looking as human hair. Although they are definitely getting better and better over the years. Um, they also can sometimes have a very shiny appearance to them. But there are people out there who have found ways to minimize that shine in order to make them more realistic. There are also blends. So these are wigs that are made from human hair as well as synthetic. And because of that, they get the best of both worlds. Because of the blend, typically you can still use heat to style them. 
Um, they're soft, like human hair, but the styles will usually stay longer, like a synthetic. And they're about the, in the middle of the price point between the two. Now, all of these wigs, they typically last for various amounts of time. Human hair wigs are usually last longer, and synthetic wigs will typically last less. But a wig is an investment, so as long as you are using good quality products and taking regular care of them, you can make them last for a much longer amount of time. Now, the thing that I think we all gravitate to when choosing a wig is the style. Whether it's the cut or the color, we want something that may look like our old hair, if you've lost your hair, or looks like hair that you want to experiment with that you've never had before. A couple things are good to think about in terms of the cut. Now, the cut can usually be customized. Depending on the length of the wig, you can always take it to a hairstylist and have them cut it like they would regular hair. There's also the color of the wig. And while human hair is going to be more customizable, since if you can take it to a hairdresser, they can typically color it the same as they would regular human hair. It's also good to remember that human hair wigs are not made from just one person's hair. They're made from a whole wide range of hair. And therefore, sometimes you want to be careful because they won't color completely the same. It's not all the same hair. And so it's always a good idea to take it to a hairstylist who has dyed wigs before, cut wigs before. And when it comes to a synthetic wig, unfortunately you can't really change the color of those, but they'll be more consistent. So when picking a synthetic wig, it's good to pick a color that you know you'll want to stay with. Now the parting of the wig is also important to think about. With lace front wigs, uh, they usually offer a lot more flexibility when it comes to parting. Um, some wigs have set parts where the lace is just where the part is, and therefore you can't really switch it up. Um, a fun hack, if you do want to switch it up, is just taking your wig and shifting it. And so you can move the part from one side to the center to the other side. You will have to consider the ear tabs moving, but that is an easy way if you want to play around with the part on those types of wigs. There are also uh, free forms parting, where that's usually when it comes to a lace front, um, and you can push the part around either way, which means you have to take a little more effort and style it, but it does give you more flexibility. These are all important things to think about when you're purchasing a wig, especially for the first time. As long as you take that extra effort and make sure you're doing your research, you're measuring, you're thinking about what your needs are, you're going to make an investment that's well worth the money. So make sure you choose a wig that's comfortable and also confident. Best of luck, and make sure to check out rbswigstudio.com for all your wig needs.